stay smooth. Don't move. You here with the hot boys. boys this video is just to show y'all i'm gonna practice what i preach i'm gonna do four different hair textures four haircuts in an hour i'm gonna use the detachable blades and i'm gonna use the masters with the lever that way you get a chance to see how i grab master blade work and you can see how i can do both at the same time and you'll be able to see it and get all the instructions and understandings from my videos and our descriptions all right let's go hey so tell me what you're getting today all right i think i kind of just want like a five around the sides and the backs and then the top just trim like I don't know maybe a half an inch or so and then uh just kind of clean up the side like the back and however you think looks good all right got you i'm gonna take care of you and get it popping for y'all and i want to just start off by saying all for y'all thank you for taking the time out of y'all day to come do this with me help me out and make this video during this covid 19 pandemic i appreciate all y'all thank you so much free cuts free cuts hey <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that, but uh, <laughs> we'll get you. Take that off. Okay. So, Dries, when did you find out about how to cut hair that way? Man, people don't even know when I went to Myanmar. I went into a barber shop, and these boys didn't have no blades. Just one clipper, no lever on a clipper. And they was giving iced out haircuts. And they was doing it. Looking as good as I cuss here in the, in the United States. And I'm over there in Asia. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? How are they getting these haircuts? So I actually went into the daggone barbershop and started talking with them. And they was like, hey, pick the clippers up. And you cut some hair, let us show you how we do it. And they showed me. And ever since then, I said, I gotta figure out how to make one blade cut three different levels, because that's what they was doing. They was over there going flat, made high, swinging on an angle, making all haircuts come out sweet. And I said, wow, that's what I need to do. And that's how I started. This flat, made high, swinging on an angle, and by the way, they haircuts was not taking no 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> they weren't. And I'm like, how y'all doing this with, with no lever, one and, sticking blade, and a razor blade? And adding color, too. And was adding color. Beijing, huh? Mink outs, whatever. And I was like, wow. I mean, that was that. I seen some clean burst fades out there, man. <laughs> Mohawk, whatever you want. You, you name it, you had it. You left feeling like a barber anymore? I actually didn't believe I was a barber. They were, but I wasn't. <laughs> Did they have the same clippers like as far as electricity go-wise and everything? Or? Nah, it was some rinky thing clippers, man. The red electricity was totally different. Some Walmart clippers? Yeah, they pretty much were doing with Walmart clippers. No masters, no wall scenes, no babyless, and all of that. <laughs> the boys was out there. Just doing their thing. That's crazy. No, I'm guarding. You can't guard me. We actually got some footage of you, you know, hanging out in the shop with them. Yeah, one of these days I might put that video up. How'd you start shaving time on the haircuts? I had to practice on somebody. <laughs> and just coming into the shop, timing myself, practicing the movement, stuff like that. And uh, I took time to think about the booklet I was making because I knew I had to teach you guys how to cut hair. So I had to put it together mentally and then form a booklet so I could teach somebody else. 
that's how this all came about. So how come the first thing you didn't think of was just go faster? Man, going faster was what I tried. You know what I mean? Everybody wanted to try going faster. And, uh, in the business, that's what a lot of barbers do. You know, They just go faster, but what end up happening is customers, when they see you going faster, they thinking you jipping them out of a good haircut. So you gotta be able to do the same thing you normally do without letting them see you moving fast. But the actual movement of what you're doing is fast, but your body is not moving fast. You're letting the clipper cut the time for you. There you go. And even with the scissoring, you know, sometimes you know that people part the hair and they do the angle cuts, but Really, you could cut time on scissoring if you can get the hair and lift it up and make all your connections without having to grab the hair. And again, this is all just because of the situation, man. At the end of the day, people don't understand, barbers got families to feed. And if I can give you the same quality haircut in less time, that means I can get more haircuts in that amount of time. And then that means I can make more money. And if you still get the same quality haircut and the conversation, why not? Everybody want to raise. You know what I mean? The, the average cat that you cut, he go to his boss and ask for a raise. And they come in the barber shop and the barber go up on the price. They get in. But everybody's supposed to get a raise except the barber? That don't make sense. I never I mean, understood that. I mean, you might get a nice cut and get the job even, you know? So. Right. I give you a nice cut. You see... Your wife, you meet your wife and you get married because of my cut. <laughs> I give you a nice cut. A you, go, you go on a job interview and get a good job. Make $50,000. And then you come to the shop and say, I say, hey, man, haircut's going to be $25. Dang, man, you got to go up again? Well, you got a raise. You got a good job. You doing all that, but I can't get a raise? You came up you, by my pockets. You can, bro, but I can't, bro. So... You can grow, but I can't grow. <laughs> and also, too, sometimes you don't want to be in the chair for an hour. And I mean, you got, you got places to do things to do on a Saturday. I don't have time to be sitting in the shop all day. I don't get why people want to sit in the chair for an hour. That don't register in my brain. Like I, I'm, I'm hell hostage at this barbershop. And to sit there and know you're over there fiddling on someone else's head and I know I'm gonna get in there and be stuck there for an hour. Like, the problem is most of the time on Saturdays it's already swamped. Yeah. And you try to get it throughout the day and you either are getting it during your lunch break and yeah. you just got off work and you try to stay on that chair for an hour. Yeah, oh, that's for sure. Oh. You try to get a cut, get home, shower, and do what you gotta do on a Saturday night. I have to take the day off. Why? I gotta get a haircut. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you can go during the week when so you're not busy, right? Yeah. And still take an hour. Still take an hour. You just take your barber and DMV getting real close. Yeah. Real close. So it says <laughs> talking about the other day you went on his lunch break. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, about I, went, I went to this shop and went in there and tried to get a uh, wanted to get real simple haircut, nothing crazy. And you know, shop talk, everyone's talking and everything and about sports and whatnot. And then he looks at me, half my hair cut, and goes, hey man, you mind if I, if I take a break and eat my lunch real quick? Yeah, I mean, what am I supposed to say? I mean, like, I was like, I was kind of, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> preferably no, but, I mean, if you need to, I guess you need to. And I thought he was going to take a quick lunch break. He took like a 30, 40 minute lunch break. Wow. So I ended up being there for almost two and a half hours. I was there for a long time. And that's yeah. when I found Greece and... and that's, a lot better, yeah. And the sad part, that's not a unique story. No, and the cut wasn't even that nice, especially compared to what I've been getting in, what, 15 minutes? Yeah. I mean, any other thing you do, I get it, it's your hair, you know, it's precious. But if I don't feel the barber moving quickly, you know, I'm not getting nicked, I'm not, my head isn't getting any whiplash, I'm happy 
to pay for the same cut in half the time. Yeah. Anywhere else you go, you want to sell quickly for the same price. You go to McDonald's, you don't want to wait 30 minutes before you go to McDonald's. No. Anywhere you go, it's all about time is money. Why can't it be the same, especially as a customer, for me? It's not just about me sitting in the chair. No. But if it takes 20 minutes for me, now I watch you cut other people in 20 minutes, that means I know, oh, I can get a cut within the hour, not within today. Yeah. yeah. You said Olive Garden, you get your food in five minutes guaranteed. Sign me up. Sign me up. Every Sign me day. <laughs> Endless pasta. That's why fast food is what it is. Yeah. You know you gotta get it within that time. I need a uh, flathead screwdriver, Caleb. Uh -huh. You know, when we were learning to cut hair, <laughs> going through that gradual process of getting faster than them was actually scary. It was very and y'all was you, cutting next to bona fide barbers. Yeah. And then we were, we were like three, four months deep. And we're just like, what are you doing over there? Why are you taking so long? I'm trying to think of what was that. What holiday was it? Thanksgiving. Yep, and he said, remember he, remember the conversation? So yeah, I'm have y'all ready to cut in six weeks. Six weeks? Yeah. You gonna put me on the floor? Yeah. That was a nightmare. I'm gonna put you on the floor in six weeks. Man, he's Man. That was scary. I'm having problems with these clippers. Hey, that's real life. That happens in the shop, too. It happens in the shop, constantly. <laughs> what was it? I'll ask you straight up, Joey. What was it like learning... You know, you were a part of this program that he did on the channel. So, what was it like going through the program, highs and lows? <laughs> uh, highs was the end result of you knew what was going to happen. And you weren't taught, you were taught how to cut hair. So, it didn't matter which clip you picked up, you knew what you were doing. But that gaining experience part and shacking people up was the worst part of the whole process. Just like... You, you don't want to do bad on somebody's head. And then they have to deal with that haircut for what? Two or three weeks of yeah. your fortune. Yeah, and it's definitely. just like, that, that that would be to me one of the scariest parts because not having the lever and the guard right in the beginning and just being taught how to just straight cut the hair. By these rules, they're going to work, but you got to learn to use your wrist. Your wrist is the lever. That, that gave, me, gave me some fit. Wrist, definitely. I remember some days your wrist just didn't want to move anymore. I mean, forearm even. And I'm not gonna lie, there was times I went home, and I would watch YouTube, I'm like, man, why aren't we cutting hair <laughs> like, like this? It looks so much easier, not as stressful, but... What did some of the barbers used to do when I, on my day off to I go? remember that, I can talk about that. I'm on the barbers, right after my dad left, he told me, hey man, put the detachables down, man. You need to pick up, pick up that Andes, put your guards on, and just go to work. I know what your father said, I know he mean well, but this is how you should do it. You know, I trust my father. He ain't still be wrong yet, so... <laughs> but three months later, that same barber recognized a difference. Now, he was a bona fide barber. He, beautiful haircuts, nice. It's just the time. Not talking about how good you are. It's just the time. So, I remember one day the shot was slammed. And uh, I was taking care of people. Nice haircuts, good customer service, but it wasn't in 45 minutes to an hour. And he looked at me and I looked at him and we... We had an understanding of, okay, I'll never say something about your father's technique again, and he never said it again. So, it's just... Message received. Yeah. Well, but I feel like that's what, like, really classifies someone who can cut here and someone who's an actual barber. You can have nice tools, but if you don't know how to use them mm -hmm. and finesse with them, then, I mean, what are you really doing? You can look nice and cool with all these fancy stuff, but yeah, if you don't know how to work it... And it's just funny that cutting hair has not changed. Think about that. Anything engineered over time throughout generations been changed, upgraded the technique. Mm -hmm. Cutting hair is the exact same technique they've used for centuries. For centuries. It's right. just the same exact thing. It's like no one has improved. Like Steph Curry now changed the concept of how shooting threes. Now, it's not like dudes didn't have the qualifications or the skills to do it. Right. No one just practiced enough to make it an automatic thing. Now these dudes are practicing, it's automatic. Just shooting from the local regularly. And it's like you've got to change evolve the game work on something and i really do feel that that comes from the barber world doesn't cooperate with one another very well because most people just have an idea of something they want, they want to do but when they tell someone what they want to try everyone looks at them like they're stupid and when you actually try it that's when people want to pay attention so mm -hmm. sometimes you just 
got to bypass all the talking and just go for it. And you know how I knew about that in the barber world? Remember when we were doing repairs? Yes. And somebody comes in and you ice out their clippers. They go back to the shop with your car talking, oh, and then you go into the shop a month, three months later, they never talked about you. Mm -hmm. Because you got their clippers right, that was cutting time for them, and it wasn't sharing with any other. No. I they actually remember the day we went to the shop. And the barber said to us, we said to him, hey, you need to tell the other barbers, you know, we take care of them stuff too. He said, no, 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 you only come for me. You only make my stuff good. I don't want them, I don't want their stuff hitting like mine. And I was like, as a little kid, I was 12 years old at the time. And I looked at my father, I'm like, why wouldn't you want your fellow barbers in your shop? That's a business to make money for everybody to cover. Why do you, as the owner, only want to make, you know, have the best clippers? Yeah, welcome to my world. That's pretty much been my whole life. That's pretty much been my whole life working in the shop next to people. You know, I always used to be like, why well, barbers so segregated? They seem so cool to each other, but when it comes to their skills, their talent, they hide what makes me pretty good to the next barber because everybody is about my customer, my money, my livelihood. Every other profession I know work together to make it better. But sometimes the barber world, they don't. So you know how many barbers call me and say, why are you doing these videos, bro? Showing people how to cut hair. Other barbers, other sharpeners call me. Why are you showing people how to sharpen their blades? What are you doing? You messing with our money. And I'm like, bro, I'm not messing with nobody money. I'm just showing people how to get better at stuff we do. If you, if people like you and they gonna spend money with you, they gonna spend money with you regardless. I'm not gonna take your money away. I'm not taking money away from myself. But that's the world we live in. But it's funny, I will say that's the one thing I noticed is different. We went to the Arizona shows, dudes was in their own world. They were on their own thrones. And the California shows, them dudes was real nice. Yeah. They were really talking to each other, explaining things. They were really hyping each other up. So that's the only thing I did notice is the difference. Over here, mm. it's just, I mean, it's a challenge because that's how it is in the barbershop. Every man for himself, usually. So. Yeah. Even when we work together, customers, customers were shocked the way we, how? we work together in the shop. If a customer come in and I couldn't get him, and I would say, hey, you know, my, my, my son can get you, or my brother can get you. They'd be like, oh, it's okay to get in his chair? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, brother, it don't matter whether you pay me or pay him. It's we, the shop. It's the shop. The shop lights have to stay on. Right. <laughs> you know? We together here. If all Whether the money go to me or whoever, as long as it's in here, we good. Right. We gotta pay these bills somehow. One person can't cut everybody, and then it's like, we've got more people at the shop, and you all take a, take a turn. And, so and matter of fact, remember, we would tell, cuss, tell them how to cut their hair, so we yeah. would make sure you get the same cut. Like, hey, don't take the tail, don't take the skin too high, you like it right here, just swing it down, you make sure. And it, it's funny, I don't know if barbers do that really, but they, you say to them, well, I'll get a number two. You know you've been cutting them with the one and a half the entire time. Yeah. So you never straighten them out. So when they go to another shop and say a number two so and get a number two, they're like, oh, the person jacked me up. They didn't jack you up. You, They did exactly what you told them yeah. to do. Unfortunately, no one instructed you what you wasn't really getting the whole time. I will speak. My dad, for me, was a good example of remembering client's haircuts. And I remember you were in training, and I said to you, I said, how do you remember every person's haircut? Some people came only one time, didn't come for months. And he's like, oh, you got the skin fade number two on top, right? And I was like, what? And even they were like, uh, yes. <laughs> and then before you know it, you know we knew. <laughs> and I remember one time, your customer got in my chair. That's the worst one. It's not that my customer, it's yeah. your customer. I remember <laughs> everybody else's customer was cut. So Joey's customer come by, like, hey, Joey's not here, but I can cut you. I said, what you get? Skin fade, comb over, hard part, right? And he was like, oh my God, pay attention. I don't want to make sure whoever gets in my chair, I can give them the same cut. So, but I do say it. That does come from being family, so I think if we were anybody else, we might have adopted the same. Yeah. So and that's why a lot of successful barbershops are usually family owned and operated, and just gets passed down generation to generation. The barber's like, business started off being passed down from family, and that's pretty much how they was able to be successful because family worked together and cut the family, the neighborhood together: uncle, brother, son, mom, sister. That's what made it successful. I also appreciate, you know, 
Yeah, I know. I know what y'all gonna say about me, but I like the customers. Okay, so I try to make the customers feel like home. No, we know you. We know you. Yes, get it out the way. But I do appreciate how people will come in expecting to be treated one way, and they were treated like that. So I do miss that. You know, people come in looking around. Okay, it's all black barbers. Okay, I don't know if they can cut me. We cut straight hair. I remember guys will come in with hair down here. Talking about some, just trim me up, you know. We cut everybody. Ooh. Remember some of the customers that come in and look at us and Definitely. say, "There's all black people all in there." <laughs> <laughs> they ain't gonna cut it. And they were, and they were run. Leave. I remember. Remember the? I chased one customer out the door and said, "Hey, we can cut your neck." And he said, "No, thank no, you." No, I'm good. No, so you said, can't cut you me. You gonna get me? You ain't gonna get me like this. So. But it was nice, you know, we cut kids, I mean little kids, because some babies. First haircuts we did in there, first, oh, you know, man. first certificate <laughs> So it was a good time. I and still we, will never understand why we charge kids less. <laughs> I still won't, to the day I die, I'll never understand. Oh, his glasses, his glasses. Yeah. Oh, looks good. Need your glasses, huh? Uh, no. Clock kit. <laughs> good to go? Yeah, it looks great. Man. You gotta get the day and the job. Alright, put that mask back on. Alright, Brandon, let's get it. Aren't you getting your cut after Brandon? No, I'm last. Oh, you're last? So technically, just you come in my chair. This one makes it easier to swap later. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's real clean. I like it. Oh, you're gonna get the day and the job, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do my girlfriend, but she also is my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what are we doing for you, Brandon? Uh, can I do a skin fade, and then I want to add that part back, and then a little trim on the top. Got it. Alright, we're going to do you with the Grandmaster Blade. So what y'all think about that Grandmaster Blade? It's psychedelic. I can only speak for that because you put it on my own piece, so... Arizona's weather right now is prime time, so cut it outside in a prime November? We're in November, no snow, not cold. Okay. Grandmaster blade can go from a 5-0 all the way to a 3, depending on how you use it, the angling, the cutting. Give me some tunes, eh, to Caleb? I got the tune. I got the tune. I got the tune. <laughs> Give us some funk, some rock, some blues or something, hardcore. Uh, hey, we don't so now Caleb. that we, we're talking about 15 minute haircuts. Uh -huh. Turn the chair. I found a funny video about somebody doing 15 minute haircuts. Mm -hmm. When it was never a thing before, never existed. No one was on YouTube typing in 15 minute haircuts or how to do it. All of a it sudden. It was, and the barbers who did it, they was, they was iron some people out. I appreciate how when barbers did the video, they had the time on the video. I liked that a lot. There's a good amount of 15 minute haircut videos on YouTube. I see. They're all skin fades. Yeah. Three on top. Yeah. Skin fades one. Yeah. It's not any haircut. A full cut that you get every day in the shop all the time. And you see their hands. <laughs> Which, I mean, like, in those situations, I feel like that's cool. They're predated, but... This one was, uh... Pretty plagiarized. Yeah. And I mean, it's not, it really at the end of the day is about being balanced. You don't just cut fast to say, I can cut fast. Because when you're in the shop and you got 10 people waiting, you're not saying to your customers, hey, I'm going to cut you fast. They got to get out of there. You got to get to the next client. But everybody wants a client. Right. And the thing is, is, the guy in the chair want to be. It's not a contest. You know what I mean? We're yeah. going to take care of the customer. Pay our bills, get out of the shop on time, and you know, and give our customers a good haircut so they can go on about their business, you know? And the thing is, everybody want to be treated right who's in the chair. Yeah. So the guy in the chair don't want to feel like you rushing to make money right. to get the next customer. But at the end of the day, 
if you give him a really nice haircut. And the guy waiting, see that haircut and realize, wait a minute, he moved fast to get me in the chair, so I don't be in here all day. Each customer feels Each special. Each customer feels sense. special. So it's like you treat the customer who's waiting with respect, and you treat the customer in the chair with respect by making sure he get a haircut that he can be like, oh, wait a minute. So not only did he pick up speed or cut time by the way he cut, this dude actually gave me a high quality haircut. And then they that's how they gain you gain their respect the next time you have to go fast or they get a 15 minute haircut. Yeah. When they get out that chair and realize, oh, this dude, he about his business. Hey, when you grab that mirror, you realize, oh, he iced me out, literally. So, and it, it makes you want to come back because you know I'm not going to be stuck in this yeah. I don't have to order my Chinese food and sit down and eat it and, you know, you know, especially make an appointment even you know you're gonna get yourself taken care of so yeah now i remember uh coming down after some time after i'm you know coming down to get a haircut i had been with a couple other barbers and naturally i was like uh you know like, you know trying to make plans or something like, all right i'm gonna go get a haircut i'll probably like come through in like two hours or something because i'm about to need an hour to get a cut and then i gotta need an hour to come meet you and then i went down to yarga's shop Walked in and wasn't even paying attention to the time. Got a nice clean cut. Saw that mirror like you said, and then looked at my phone and it said only 30. It was 15 minutes since the last time when I walked in. It was like maybe five minutes I waited and maybe another five, 15 minutes. So I walked in at like two. Walked out 2:30 and I was like, Yo, hey guys, I can be there in like 30 minutes in an hour. <laughs> like I thought this cut was gonna take a lot longer and looking clean. So nah, man, ain't nobody else in the game really doing it like you guys. And, and another thing, obviously, if the shop ain't full, we're not sitting there doing that to everybody. No. Like, if the shop ain't full, when we have a good customer, we talk to, we joke, we ask you questions, where you from, first time right. being, we're going to be polite and cut your hair accordingly. Right. And of course, there's another thing. If somebody's picky, there's yeah, nothing it, you can do about it that. It Somebody says, good. they see the haircut done, oh, can you do this, can you do that? You can still be there for 45 minutes if you have a customer that's like that. So it's not everyone's supposed to just flat out get 15 minutes. But if you know your regulars, yeah, for sure. And it's a Saturday, and even your regulars, like they appreciate. It. I remember so many times regulars come in and they knew, okay, it's slam, but I'm gonna get my cut. I mean, we had four barbers at that time too, so you know you're gonna get cut with any hour, and that's what we say. Customers are coming, oh, you guys are slam. I'm gonna just and like, no, no, no. no what no, you no, see no. is is not what you think. You'll get cut with the hour. Like, oh shoot, how long is it late? Thirty minutes. And oh, they're looking at six people like thirty minutes. There's no way. And having an appointment system. <sighs> Appointments and walk Appointment system. Yeah. Listen, That's Saturdays it. was six a.m. to six p.m. No bathroom, no food. No. Maybe you can get a bottle of water from somebody, but yeah. that was it. You didn't leave your station. We don't leave. We didn't leave in the middle of a cut for no lunch break. <laughs> no. Nah, no lunch break, bro. Even yeah. the bathroom. I remember one time I. I was surprised I had just two minutes to go to the bathroom one day, and everyone was like, ha, he gets a bathroom break. You know, they clown you or whatever, but it is what it, it is. is. You, uh, hey, we had it, we made up a saying for it. Murder. 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 <laughs> yeah, that was the saying. When you that, knew. That, yeah. Hey, but we, remember that? It was morning shift. We had six to ten slam appointments and walk-in. You had a nice little slowdown from 10 to 12, and then from like one, people wake up late. One to six, boom, it was murder again. Ooh. So, murder, <laughs> sure. Yeah. At least we had the tunes going. Always. We always had the tunes going. We didn't have Caleb then, but Caleb was in the making. He was playing in the shop a little bit sometimes. Definitely. Yeah, that was crazy. I will say it, it was very hard learning this program in a shop in real time. Yeah. If like you could have had a chill situation to learn, it would have been easier. But trying to learn this technique when you have other barbers doing another technique and then you got yeah. customers right there waiting for you and you got, I mean, we were new. We, I'm like, we messed up. We made oh, mistakes yeah. just like anybody else, you know? And he is a good teacher, but sometimes he didn't like him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I knew y'all didn't like me. Definitely didn't like you. I mean, I was going home just trying to get away from you. Hey, know? but you, when you was when you was going to the bank, uh, going to the bank, making them deposits and the tips and everything you was making afterwards, 
what you were saying then. Yeah, now we're best friends. Was, yeah, now we're best friends. But what's funny is... We were never best friends. I just understood and appreciated the situation. But I mean... You know. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't let y'all just cut any kind of way because at some point, I knew I was going to need y'all to help me get those customers out there. And if you never learn how to cut fast, you will not be able to cut survive. fast when you have to get through the clients. When you have to, yeah. Right, so I was not gonna let y'all just learn how to use the lever, learn how to use the plastic guards. No, I was gonna teach y'all how to use the flat mid high, how to swing on the angle, how to use the detachable blades so that you could control your income. Yeah. It could, be, it. it could be 10 people waiting. And you know what? You gotta still go the pace you gotta go. And it don't matter. And if they get up and go in somebody else's chair, or get up and go to another shop because they don't want to wait, that's Same because word. they... And, and we did have two shops within a mile or two, so it was, you know, and people would say, oh, Slam, I'll go over here, or vice versa, so... Yep. And I, it was nice when it was just the three of us after we, you know, we didn't have all the bars we had before, it did really pay Keep off. Keep the widow's feet? Uh, nah. Get it nice and lined up. What? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. No more Widow's Peak? No more, no more Widow's Peak? Hold up now. Brandino. Huh. Oh. oh, wow. So since when you start no Widow's Peak? Hey, you know, some things change in my life, and I just thought, you know, it's time to, it's time to get that clean lineup. Yeah, bygones be bygones. Hey, right? You know what it was? He seen that, he seen that video from him from... Hey, it sure Calvary. was. I saw that video man as a kid. Said, Yo, I was crispy. That was crispy. <laughs> I said, oh man. <laughs> I only had it because she liked it. <laughs> 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 wait, I did the, No, I'm not. We're not in the same boat, but I did something strange. Oh man. It'd be like <laughs> that sometimes. Wait, which time? Can't you just cool your hair out? Oh, yeah. yeah, I, I was see, always, I was always reason, That's the only reason Joy has hair is because he was interested in someone who liked the curls. Before that, Why Joy was getting a 1A. Huh? A 1A on yeah. top. Okay? You, the curls didn't look that? bad, but you had the LeBron James. I'm balding. <laughs> yeah, you had that LeBron James. <laughs> <Okay>. Next question. <laughs> hey, someone this, this he had a landing pad right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's but you was doing the keeps. You said you were doing the drops, right? The guns? I was, but I ran out. Oh. Out of money. Free trial. <laughs> I didn't run out of free trial. Huh? <laughs> free trial. 30 days and it came real quick. She ran out of emails to come up with. Woo! Oh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you ain't never lost. I've spelled my name so many ways. <laughs> you put X's everywhere, right? You sent me an email. Underscore, like, underscore, underscore. You <laughs> sent me an email. We know it's you. It's the same address. <laughs> same password, too. Same password, too. Like, no, no, this one is spelled Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. It says, no, we mail it to the same address. Sir, just because you drop a letter in your email address does not mean we can't identify you. <laughs> what do man, I take care of myself. <laughs> berries and juices. Berries and juices. Juices and berries. Yeah, <laughs> Put your head up a little bit. You guys just recently built this? Or? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep, sure enough. I like the seats. The seats are real, like, nice. Don't touch don't them. Touch them. <laughs> don't touch don't them. Touch don't touch them. Don't, no, just don't touch them. They might fall. Oh, I got you. You think we're kidding? You don't see us touching the sink. <laughs> Even when he washes his hands, his hands are floating. Just <laughs> close it up. Oh. So just a trim on Like, they're yeah. sturdy, yeah. but they ain't. Don't rest there. Um, it's, it's not a low bearing. No. Nope. <laughs> it's a piece of wood. Point. And then Eddie back there is the <laughs>
they're scared, you know, their nose is running, they got hair, gel in their hair from the beginning of the day, so you want to go with the cup, you know. It's tough to describe, in reality, it is difficult, but when you have your mindset down to cutting the kid, it's yeah. not. It's like, once you see a kid, you know he's coming to your chair, you just lock in like, I got a kid, that's yeah. it. This is this what's gonna happen. Because if you constantly think they're an older person, you're like, yo, why are you moving? Why are you right, moving? Right, right. And I, I do appreciate that we never would ever mean to kids. No. And we had some bad kids. You, know, you got the kids that want to see every step of the haircut. Oh, when they turn, when they turn, turn in the around. mirror what with is? you. I yep. love that. Because yep. they look and up like, like they and they see you, eyes you and lock eyes with you and they're like, no, no, no. Keep your hair straight. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm trying to cut you, right? So you go to look in the mirror to see what's being done, and they turn their head with you and both look in the mirror. Now you're both looking at each other like <laughs> you're not helping me now. So then you finally give them when the kid's real bad, the claw. Clank! <laughs> they go to turn the head. <laughs> you grab. They don't. Hey, my favorite people. I, kids who are older, they used to move a lot. And I used to say, I say, do you want a ball spot? <laughs> and they go, no, no. Please be still. Be still. Two words. Be still. That's all. Awesome. Chill. Just relax, man. I got you. You know what good. But hey, Don't I mean, there are kids. We had some situations where kids, we, you know, we're jumping out of the chair and Woo. they're moving. And, I mean, listen, your back will be hurting. That's and that's another thing. I don't understand how I could be on a kid's dome for 45. Like, Kids, you know they have like 10 minutes. You know you got yes, 10 you minutes. Got, no, and kid, you got. Kid, I say 12. Like, 10 minutes they start. After yep. 12 minutes, it's over. It's like, it's over. It's like, yo, are you done? And you're like, I'm not done, but I got a good bulk of it done because I have to hurry up. Right. And so, I mean, it's like, there's always that moment where they were still and they decide to move. i never forget this one kid. He was a regular too. And I, he, get, he got a, he usually gets like a number two fade. I'm going to line him up right here. He said, boom. I just said, hey, you getting this high skin fade today, my friend. Yeah. And I looked at his dad, and his dad said, I told you don't move. I gave him a high and tight. That boy never moves again. Remember? He would. He knew. So it's just, he lives and learn. Kids, I mean, they're gonna, those same kids are gonna be adults one day. So if you just be nice to them and train them, they'll eventually learn. There's no sense in being mad or yelling at nope. a kid or anything. Nope. They're a kid. They're gonna scream, they're gonna cry. You're gonna get snot in your cake a couple times, you know? Yeah. Be nice, and, and I remember those kids will remember you being nice. Yes. And then the next time, the next time you get them an AJ shirt. Uh, well, I didn't like, I didn't mind the kids. I really did. AJ love the kids. Do the kids. Do the kids. Do the kids. <laughs> I really didn't mind the kids at all. I had that one kid. <laughs> Which one? Your yeah, boy. He gave me fits. Robbie. 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 Yeah, definitely. Fits. That was funny that day. <laughs> no, we really. It was funny to me. <laughs> I was learning to cut him. This kid was bugging. 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 <laughs> I was standing there. And like, you know, like I'm at that triple line. He's messing up my triple. On top of me messing up my triple. Right. And I'm just like, this cannot be happening. He gets an AJ's chair. We have a full conversation. No, we didn't talk. Cool. Not not time. Number. He sits in AJ's chair for like two or three months. Then he comes back to my chair. Wild out again. <laughs> Wow, ow. Wow. Well, <laughs> what was it like when you have a client for you guys? You know, have a client in a wheelchair or had any some kind of a disability, still giving them, making them feel like any other customer? Oh, that was yeah. the Disney that was chair mover. Disney chair Yeah, that was, that was fun. Like, you don't get this work, don't worry. You just move the chair. You seen they seen us move the whole chair, move like in, and just especially when we were training, yeah. And we couldn't really move the chair the correct way. And your dad was honest about doing a good job. Yeah. And they felt like, yo, I'm not getting gypped. Right. Like, yo, they're I'm getting the same attention anyone else right. could get. Clearly, Ooh, that was something that. Like that. That's funny, that's when you got, I think in the range, there's two eras of the most tips you got. When you actually get good, and when you're learning, because your dad's telling you what to do. Many times. And then the customer's just like, yo, they are not going to let me leave here. Right. Because he's more angry with us, the right. way the person's looking, than they would be right. about, 
because they were about to walk out with whatever we were going to give them. Right. So that was the best we thought we could do. Right. And they were okay with it. But when, they wouldn't have been happy with it, but they were okay with that at that moment. And we you had that one. Mark, too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nah, you good. I forgot to tell you. Yeah. Hey, Dad. What's up? Delicious. Uh, you had it on this side. I had on the left side. Uh, yeah. What's up? The left side. What's up? I can't tell you how many times me and Joey snapped the cape, said, thank you, have a nice day. And my dad said, he walked up with us and said, excuse me, let me look at that. He said, I'm sorry, sit back down next year. And I'm like, Shut. They have to register paying. And they're like, no, nah, sit back now. And I'm, you already got the next customer like, in your chair. You're and he's like, excuse me, with the get up in your and head. sit back down. You're standing with the clippers. So they knew, which it was good learning for us not to just, you know, give a cut and give, you know, have someone walk out, but really learn. And at the end of the day, you get the best cut. Think of painting a picture and you actually think it's good. And somebody's like, go back in there and fix something. And you're like, yo, I did the best I could in painting this. Like, I'm actually scared of going back in there and checking it, it up. <laughs> and you know what's the worst part? You do do that at times. And you have to learn not to do that. You know what it is? Why I think I, I was cool with you not having the lineup in the front. In the beginning, I sucked so badly at lining up. <laughs> if you don't want me to, I don't <laughs> want to. <laughs> just, just be safe. So, so I was just like. You guys know I've been a Bucks fan all my life. Joey. What? <laughs> what? Bruh, yo. You from what? Boston. Whoa. You ain't never been whoa, a Bucks fan. Whoa. It's a Giannis. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you such a fibber, bro. You such a fibber. The dude leave Boston yo, and go to the Bucks, and now you're a Bucks fan? You ain't never been a Bucks fan. I got some cousins in Florida. Bro, uh, get out yeah. of here. I got some cousins in Kansas City. I got some cousins <laughs> in LA. I've been a Bucks fan. Hey Caleb, man, play some of them tunes you be rocking He's been to. Playing this whole time. Nah, some of them rock stuff, bro. Hit us with some oh, hardcore yeah. jump. I wasn't gonna say anything. But... I was vibing the whole time. Bro. I'm vibing, man. I want to hit some juice. Cause he about to start talking juice. Nah, this dude talking reckless, talking about some here Bucks fan. So I can't be a Bucks fan. No, 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 no. Please, just. I finally get to tell you that your team is trash. Right. Oh my god. I've waited oh. for years. Oh. For we waited for years to tell you that the Patriots is trash. Is trash. And now and when now we finally here. get a chance to tell you the Patriots is trash, All you're a Bucks fan. Yeah, yeah. Yo, it hurts. I don't know the speech. <laughs> I don't hey, know. Welcome. Yo, I'm watching the game. I'm like, how can we win if we have less points than them? <laughs> Final score. I'm like, how did we we didn't win? I don't get this. It's time for you to join the Cardinals, bro. It's time for you to move on. Joey's I've, like, I've always been like a Cardinals watcher. Yeah. But we look Arizona good this year. Was, oh my goodness. We look good this year. What 
And even the vibes we be always, but you be always rocking out two in the room, making. Stuff I think he's up. afraid to play too loud. I think. No, nah, he don't have to play loud. He just get the middle on. I'm not telling the musician how to, how to do his thing. Thank you. I'm not saying how to do his thing. I'm just yeah, saying he's good. You're telling good. me to play something. I've been playing something this whole time. Oh, no. I was just saying change the vibe because he was about to get at it. The buck. That's he all. He wanted some up-tempo music. Guys. Okay, so the Cardinals are better than the Patriots. The Browns are better than the Patriots. Wait, wait. Say that again for me. <laughs> just one more time. Well, Who's better know. than the Patriots? Say it for the people in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cardinals... <laughs> Have a winning record that reflects a better resume. I'm at this current. Go to the gulag right now. Go out there. No, 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 no. You want to retrieve your season? Go to the gulag. Wait, come on, man. What do you think about Cam in the sense of being there? I mean, how you feel? He needs, well, you know, he just needs receivers, bro. That's why Brady left. He left the cupboards bare, man. He left. He no, no. Don't put was, that on Brady. It was no, bare before you. It was. Got thank there. you, Brandon. I appreciate that. The dude was making Haitian meals every day. All the time. You know what that's like. I'm so used to it. Such a chef. And now he got Antonio Brown. Oh, oh my gosh. Hey, a, my fantasy looking nice now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> So, well, if Michael Thomas decides to get healthy at some point, <laughs> well, that was my first pick. I wanted to cry. He goes from play. I love that. Always healthy. As soon as I cut that dude to check, my leg, my leg. <laughs> my face is Christian like. McCaffrey, always healthy. Yeah. Cut that first check. Oh, my leg. Yeah. Hit the deck. It's like, wow. Did you see it, Jay? Yeah. 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 That happens. You know what? I mean, do you feel like the check changes how people play against them? Depending on the person, definitely. Depending on the person, yeah. Like if someone's like, I'm good? also, I don't know. I don't know football <laughs> as much as you guys, so. Um, it depends on the person. Some people are really just about their money. So once they get it, they're like, all right, well, I'm Remember? guaranteed this much for these many oh, years. Yeah, it's even saying basketball. Auto What's Porter Jr. Yes. <laughs> Auto Porter, what happened to him? Oh they cut a contract for the Dini. Well, the Wizards, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then you got this people like Jared W. <laughs> <laughs> Champion caliber. You know? Yeah. All the way. That's, that's crazy. Nah. I just never thought I would see the Patriots look so bad. Hey, but you know what? Y'all went like what, 10 years, right? Huh? Yeah, how long did you guys go with Brady's season? 20 years. 20 years. 20 years with Brady. It was never. Not this. Yeah. Not, I've never seen this. They had a bunch of old linemen opt out. Dude, yeah, they did. They like five old linemen yeah. opt out. That was another thing, too. Yeah. That's still not going to take away from the fact that, like, Actually, we're not protecting the, team, the 49 is that mad dude's missing. Oh, dude, see, see? I hate to see people get hurt. I really do. I really do. I want I want to face you at your strength. We but you know what? We both a week one. Hey, hey. Yes. My division, 10 years, past 10 years, if you want to include the Cardinals, yes. within the past 10 years, have all been in a Super Bowl. Yes. You take out the Cardinals, within the past three years. No, four years. Three or four years. When four was years. the Rams last time? Three years. Three years. Were in St. Louis, maybe? Really? Or LA? Dude, Seattle know. was in against Patriots, and the Rams against the Patriots, and then the Niners. Oh, oh, I thought you, I'm sorry. You like, said Rams. I thought you were saying the Rams. Can I catch a break? Yeah, get a break. This is your year, man. Uh, dude, Russell uh, Wilson's so good, man. Uh, yeah, but he got no defense. Dude, Jamal Adams, and they just got what's his name? Um, uh, defense lineman that was on the Niners and then left last, this year to the Bengals or to the Ravens. Carlos Dunlap. Yeah. Picked him up. And now you got both of them back out. Yeah. He's a good dude. He is. He's not he is. like. He's not like a. I wouldn't say he's like. I mean. All you need is to get the ball in Russell's hands one or two more times and you know what happens. That's that's your problem. The DK Metcalf, Lord of Mercy. I don't want to talk about him. Him and uh, <laughs> he took away Buddha's touchdown, bro. That, and you know what's that was his touchdown for the taking. That's that's he had to be so loser and chase him down. I don't, down I don't mind him being that good. I just mind that we could have the Patriots could have got him in the draft. Nikhil Harry. Nikhil Harry. <laughs> okay, the Patriots would have got him. What happened? I want to throw to him. He still would have at least been better nah, than dude, this. is the second coming of Megatron, bro. You can make out a problem. Bro, bro, bro. I, I know this sounds crazy. But it's the same thing with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. You could have got CD Lamb or. They should Jared Judy? None of them. None of them. Jordan Love. 
Hey man, he better start learning how to play like Tyson Hill. They, they, they put in the other backup QB. Yeah. They, 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 they said he was bad during practice the whole time. Yeah, but give him practice. <laughs> you talking about practice? You talking about practice? Playoffs? Playoffs. One of the Brown, funniest Brown's videos ever. Wow. How far? That whole Dude. division's winning. I, yeah, I, I know, know that's why. We might it might be Pittsburgh, the Ravens, and the Browns all. It most play. likely is. No, I think it's gonna be the same yeah. thing for my life. Now all the Niners need to do is well no, the Rams are looking good. I think we might have three teams. Well they added it. another team, right? Another game this year for the playoffs. It's like a because they gave the first seed of the round of one by first round by and then it's then it's like a six other game. Yeah, I think it is. They added two more. They did add. I mean, one in each This could be nice. You hear the NBA is going to start up in December? Yes. Like the 22nd or something like that? Oh, um, yes. It was the 1st of <laughs> December. <laughs> um, I, know, I keep hearing rumors that my boys, my sons are going to make a move for Chris Paul. I keep hearing Booker wants to be out. I'm like, no, yeah. dude, stop, stop. I, dude. I've been reading like he wants to go. I'm like, why? I mean, I know I get why, but man, we have nothing. Stop the cap. We have around. nothing. Stop the cap. <laughs> nah, dude, he signed a six-year deal, brand new facility, he got a nice coach. Nah, he's happy. We just need to start he's making. Happy. How do you know? You want to speak for the man who's losing? That no, how do you know? No, we just went eight and zero. And we, yeah, I know we won eight in a row. Trust me, I watched every one of those okay, games. But this is our first year with a good coach, actually. Like an actual good coach. Hey, if uh, if come on, man, Brandon, I was at the games head, last year. <laughs> so <laughs> we didn't have our coach, dude. We I know. He's I'm just it. saying. Andre got suspended the first one. Hey, games. I know that, that was that, that was terrible. So probably would have got into a playoff. I don't want to talk about the Andre. That dude Booker is a beast, and he's getting only getting better. He's finally getting recognized. He's only yeah. and but he's what I believe is he should go to the Celtics. Shut up! <laughs> Stop talking. Why? Just say I it, uh, oh, you're a Boston Celtics man now? Oh, you quick to leave Boston teams. Now he wants to go to the Celtics. So, come on, man. Get out of here. You should have saw this dude. He was getting amped on the Celtics in the Heat series. <laughs> oh, how the mighty fall. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. That, was, that was terrible. I never screamed at the TV. <laughs> and every time, no matter what game I'm Jimmy watching, Buckets. the whole house is always against me. Because you're Joey. That, that's not an answer. It is around here. Stupid. Now, you don't know real pain until you're in a household of Dallas Cowboys. Woo! Is that what you, you are? You're the resident Cardinal fan. You are? Really? Well, no, I'm not a Dallas Cowboys. No, but I've gotten, I watched the Cowboys and uh, Cardinals game at an all Cowboys fan house. Dude, it just, I mean, obviously, they, they have nothing to say. We would go to Boston. I would have loved to see that one like that. Cowboy fans are really Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, Cowboy fans are delusional. Hey, we Joey, had a Super Bowl. Joey, Joey, hold up. We got one better for you. Tell them the story. When your boy came in, you said, oh. you can't spell Dallas without two back-to-back -back L's. <laughs> I had it. <laughs> Old boy had Yo, AJ. <laughs> no, AJ had a customer in his chair. He was like, now, let me give you the six story. three, Bang, dude, six four, bang, swole, swole. Yeah. sitting under a black cape with a Dallas Cowboys jersey on. I don't know it, and I say you can't spell Dallas without two right. back to back L's. He got so red, dude. Instant. I like that. I'm still not with you. Yeah, but the oh, thing man. is, he said nothing. He said no. He said no. Average. Eight no. <laughs> <Full help. laughs> he said nothing. And when, he, when I snapped the cable off, my dad said, Why you ain't telling me you was a cowboy fan? <laughs> Shirt, hat, uniform, everything. Keychain, Dallas. I got a big Dallas sticker on the truck. Yeah, we still have from Skip and Shannon. You can't spell that without two back to back hills. Skip! You can't spell that without two back to back hills. Yeah. I think Giannis is going to. I don't think so. I don't think so. Giannis is not that kind of they guy, dude. Talk that dude. He's not that kind of guy, man. I don't Kevin Durant, we thought wasn't that kind of guy. Oh no, he's a what? 
We all, we, we were all shocked. I I'm thought not gonna lie, I was. I, was, I, was, I, was, I remember I really that thought you were gonna go to Boston. But oh! I would, I, if I honestly That's what I'm waiting for. I was like, come on, we need you. Yeah, brother, just want a chance. Yep. With that. Did he get a plane for me? Nope. Hey, I'll take a minute. I'll take a minute. You got a ring. And my brother walked up to him. Give me your ring, Harry. Don't even say that. Give me your ring. Hey, I'm not going to let you talk to me, disrespect me. <laughs> he said, attempt to poop up. You ball, how many points you got? Zero. I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> nah, man, who needs to get up out of where they're at is Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard needs to get up out of there. Dude. That man is a problem. And they are I like they're trying to help him, but I just don't think him and McCollum is going to do it. Did they get white side this year, too? They did, too. Yep. They but they also up. lost, um, what's his name? Um, yeah, he was out for a while. He was supposed to be like this guy. Yeah, I will say, okay, since they shot the cow, bro. Dude, I mean, the, fact, the fact that they made Rockets go seven games is a big deal. That Chris Paul? No, but what, that other kid, yep. that young kid, too. What's his name? It's like two names. Oh. No, no Dallas, uh, Alexander. Yes, him. Yes. He's, yeah. Your yeah. boy Dork came up. He was undrafted and he was oh, doing his thing. So, I mean, I don't know. That's a lot of pressure for a rookie to be in any type of playoffs. Definitely. So, Definitely. I know people might have to say, like, oh, Tally here only did good at a certain point, but hey, hey he's playing ball down. I mean, you can only ask so that much. Ball, Taco Ball like, didn't see a minute in playoffs. Who? Ball, ball, ball didn't see a second in the playoffs. I only think they didn't do that because he didn't have the body to hold down some of the defenders. So, Taco Ball. Taco Ball. Yeah. I'm talking about uh, yeah. Ball Ball. Yeah. It's crazy the last second. <laughs> Was it Taco? Yeah, like, he had his, like, ball in his Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Dude, you know who's going to be a problem this year? I really think they're going to, like, next. No, no, the Nuggets. Oh, yeah, that's what they beat the Celtics. Dude, the Nuggets? Michael Porter? Like, starting the ball? Utah Jazz. Jazz and Jazz covers. I think, I think. No, Bobo's on the Nuggets. Yes. Bobo? Yeah, he's on the Nuggets. Yes, sir. The second coming of John. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Alright, Joe. Spin it on top. Spin it on top. Burst phase is the, the worst, worst phase. phase. Have them sitting by my side when you're thirsty. Uh, hey, look, you. not sipping. Hey, Joey, not sipping. Stop it, Oh, y'all seen this stuff. Don't 
right here. Landing spot. Minutes. Any haircut. Free haircuts tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Of course, when it's a free cut, I'm gonna get a birthday. Right. Yeah. Yo, I will say, you do know, last cut of the day is 559. What you want? Burst phase. Burst phase. Shut up. I just wanna go home. I don't, you know what's the worst part? I don't mind a birthday. I hate when you're trying to tell me a birthday and I'm having a nightmare that you're saying birthday <laughs> until you finally show me the picture and I see it and I'm like, you see, a boom, you're like, oh, Lord. Lordy, Lord. Do a birthday and a low kid won't stop moving his head. Go from a birthday to a mohawk real quick. Real quick. <laughs> I got you pretty good, though. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Joey was cutting his kids. He was giving them, what was he giving them a mohawk? Yeah. And I, I was trying to talk to the kid because he was the first time cutting And I called his name, and, and the kid said, huh? And Joey said, Vroom. <laughs> And Joey, Joey was saying, bro, stop talking to my clients. Hey, you're right. I'm sorry. Dude, I'm so sorry, man. I'm bad. So he said, hey, Mark. <laughs> I, heard, I heard the couple go, Vroom. I was like, He won out. Yeah, oh, he said he's not trying to rebuild. He's rebuild. So it's sending a oh, message. Yeah. If y'all trying to rebuild, get me out I of mean, here. he already kind of was there for the rebuild. Oh, so I heard he was one that got the video grind out. Of them. We're picking up all of them. Yeah, like oh, a player like revolts or something on practice. <laughs> yeah. Leaving the talk or just yeah. skimming it? Yeah. Huh? Leaving the talk. Okay. Whatever Mom Dukes want, you know. You know Mom Dukes. She's real picky about the hair on top. What you 
Sages can still come back. Um, you know, well, first they need a team, and you know, uh, maybe maybe if they hired you as a simple coach, Joey. But accuracy is tough. He might have won that game, but he fumbled it, so it's just kind of heartbroken. Well, in his defense, he like, was gone for a whole week because of COVID. Yeah. So, like, I mean... Was he really uh, in shape, just, like, practicing and stuff? So they just went Edel let Edelman go ahead and have surgery. I think Edelman did that to get out of the season. Yeah, he could have done that any time. Yeah. Why he decided to do it now? Wasn't he a tall SQB? They should have been a quarterback QB this year. Joey Edelman? I don't think uh, the problem is he can't throw it to himself. Yeah, Who did that? Did someone? Was that Who did that? Someone did that last year. They like bought it, threw it, bought it batted, but I know, it I know zone. that video. I think, I think, I think Carson Wentz. Oh. Carson Wentz. He's gonna be lucky that he's in like the worst, the worst division. division. For a minute there, I thought the Redskins might be able to do something. But But you know what's funny? That Cowherd show, he said something that's very true. When LeBron is on the East, everyone's like, oh, the East is easy. Now he comes over the West, the West like, oh, the West isn't as good as it was. And it's like, who says that? A lot of people go, oh, the West I've never isn't heard that. I've heard, I've heard. Just heard. as it's always been. Well, because Golden State's out. Okay. Well, I mean, look, Nuggets showed up. Right. The Clippers are, you know, it's like, you, you can go down the list. Yeah, the Nuggets did show up, so it wasn't. Jamal Murray is going to be one of the greatest. Because, I mean, he was averaging like 50 a foot. He got shoes. Huh? Jamal yeah, Murray? No. He needs shoes. Uh, I'll support. That's all they look nice. Yeah, yeah. You know who I don't think, I think might be a bust? I don't know. I think he's just going to be Blake Griffin. I really don't think he's going to be the next. Versatile. I really don't think he's good. Oh, he, he just doesn't look that like he looks like he needs like even out his body. I don't know. He looks I like think you're, heavy. you're absolutely right. I just think he has a better motor than Blake Griffin. Well, yeah, but see the thing is, but that's it. That's it. He's moving past his game. Mm -hmm. You can't shoot a ball nowadays. You get pretty one dimensional. You're a liability. Yeah. Yo, Anthony. Hey. I remember when he was shooting, he was like, oh. Then I'm like, don't let him get the ball. Don't let him shoot. Bro, he's ice in the veins now. And so you're right, man. You, if you can't you play can't both shoot. sides of the field, you can't just sit in the paint yep. and think, oh, I'm going to get a rebound and go up. Uh, you got to be able to play the game of basketball. And that's how the game is changed. You can't just be a big, a big man. A big man means, oh, that's a big group one here, not like a, oh, that's a. But you know what? I think in a couple of years, it's going to go back that way. Yeah, that's what's happening with football. Air raid, air raid. I mean, you got teams like Tennessee and Panthers who are starting to build their way up where they're all running. And they're winning these games that they shouldn't be just because they're tiring out the defense. So I think it is going to be the same thing. In a couple of years, you're going to get some really big, big dudes. You know, another Tim Duncan and like a, you know, Dennis Rodman that can shoot and actually score. Yeah, he's still physical. Yeah, he's going to be too physical because you have a bunch of Draymond Greens on people's centers because. And then all you gotta do is, and then you get a bunch of fast dudes and push them up off the three. No, but at the same token, man, these guys can just shoot from anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. DeAndre Aiden actually has a nice, like, mid range jump. He does. But he can catch a basketball. He's got pancakes for hands. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> Sorry, we could have Luke and we were always. No, don't say that. Would you trade Booker for Luca? No, no, <laughs> no, no. What kind of question is that? Dude, why whoa, would you say that to us? Whoa, whoa, we went to the game. Whoa. You were at the games with us. I love Luca, but just asking. I'm not saying that's a smart. You should have had game. Jason Tatum too. Suns management is really bad. Oh yeah, and the oh, fact yeah. that we we did pretty decent in the bottom with the current Suns management. But I we're cleaning excited. the house because we got now we have James Jones in management. Yeah, well, he we was saw him at the game. We saw him at the game. Yeah, we, he was walking on our level, and I, and just some I, big dude I know, but dude, dang, I, bro. I like it. I freaked out. I was like, I said, "Yo, what's up?" Like, I'm like, yeah, kid, like, and he was like, "What's up?" And I was like, hey, he's a I like dude. it. I think he wasn't even like trying to be. He was just walking amongst the crowd, so that's pretty cool. I think we just need one, one other big name to come down, and I just don't know who it would be. And that's the thing, people. Definitely can't get Bradley Beal. 
Bradley Beal. He wants to stay with John Wall. Bro. I said, he said I want to stay with John I Wall. John Wall's healthy. I want to do it for him. I don't know how you got to do it with That's two people. That's a tough decision, but right. you're lucky if you can be with the Blazers. Right. No, I just I don't, I don't even know who. I would love to be honest with you. Just no, you know, that would never work. I just don't know what big name person you're gonna really come down here. Just because Arizona's not a big market. No one's trading to go to Utah, to Arizona, to you know these smaller market teams that are still good. You gotta have someone who wants to not do a full build. They wanna like help you, and they wanna come to be a star. Yeah. They can't like be a star and wanna team up with other stars. Yep. And kind of get an easier like the Lakers situation. It needs to be someone who wants to be that dude along with another like along with Booker or whatever and run the team and say, all right, we wanna do this. Yeah. So it takes a certain type of person. Right. And I, that's why I really I like Oubre, but he's just not turning into the guy that you need. He needs a he's a good number three. Right. But he can't You need someone between him and Booker to really to really take off. I think Book can be a number one. That he has a solid number two that can be there to help him. That's why I, I don't mind the trade for Chris Paul. It's just a lot of money. Yeah. Because I mean, Devin Booker is can be, shots he can be the next Clay Thompson because if you look at his game this I, year I he got be better at Clay Thompson. Well, wow, I'm trying to see like but, you think about it before he had to do it all. He had to oh, dribble yeah. and oh, shoot. Yeah. This time he finally got some help. So him, so that's what I'm saying. So if you think about him, he can like be a scorer. Yeah. He can get to the lane, pick and roll situation, and still have someone else get a 25, 30. Dude, we're so good. Bridges is nice on defense. He is, but that's it. <laughs> like, I'm like, man, I need you to score. He's getting better, but he's still not going to be good enough to be a number, number two. And, you know, DeAndre Ayton, he could be a solid big man if, again, you have some other help. You just focus on basketball. Right. Like, Frank Kaminsky, he did his thing. Sorry, But it's like, they, they all start talking hot. And then yeah. Yeah. You say you break out, right? Break out. Okay, no next year. No next year. No, no. When we say no product, no product. No product. No product. No product. <laughs> <laughs> right that time, he was saying my name, bro. Wow. He was looking like bump control yeah, for bump sure. Control. Huh. Yeah, speed bumps all up and down my neck. Y'all go. <laughs> I mean, the Suns games were still fun to watch last year. We went to a lot of games. It was fun. Yeah, at least in Germany. Yeah. I like Kelly Oubre, man. He, Me too, man. He does get the crowd. It's they said something about trading him to No, to they weren't. They weren't. I what? checked. I checked. They weren't. You checked? Yeah. So if you checked, this guarantee. It'd be a one-year deal, so I don't think either team would really want to do it. Because he only got one more year on his contract. I just, my problem is, is when you got Cam Johnson, Mikel Bridges, and Kelly Oubre that all play small forward, all too small to go, uh, or too small to go to power. Mm-hmm. You don't want to put Booker at point. You want is, him to keep on ball. Right. Trade for Carl Anthony Towns. I would, I would not mind that. I just don't see Minnesota doing it. I just don't see it. Minnesota. Not from that, a that, first, not from a couple first. I don't know. We don't. I mean, no, maybe. because Minnesota would be throwing themselves into a super rebuild. But didn't didn't they just go get Lonzo? Or they, I heard, what? I heard they were. Or no, they're gonna make a move for Lamelo because they got the first pick. So they go get Lamelo. Yeah, then they want to keep Cat. Yeah, probably. They're not gonna get rid of him. But then that might mean they might get rid of D'Angelo Russell, and I would not mind him as my point guard. I still don't think. He's back in the day, I wanted him to come to the Suns. He was supposed to, right? But it didn't work out. Minnesota, yeah. But I'm like, if you go get Lamelo Ball, then why are you keeping D'Angelo Russell? The little Pele. Celtics are never coming out of the East. I don't know about all that. I just think you guys need to get rid of, rid of him. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Ever since he had the baby. Mm-hmm. What? I think, I think the Mavericks might be a problem next year too. If Porzingis can say nothing, I'll be another yeah, team. This was honestly like an odd year for him. He wasn't as like at the highest level as I mean, when I saw him. 
He just can't know if that Clippers is going to win. He's different. Because the game, huh? the, we don't know if that Clippers is going to win. He's different. Show. It could Show. have been Show. Nuggets. Which show? Mavericks. That's what I'm asking. Mm-hmm. You should just give us some more time. Just listen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know oh, this. Naruto. Come on, there you yeah, go. Naruto. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sasuke! 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 our video if y'all have any questions let us know all right now take care now everybody is gone i could take my mask off and explain to you guys i wanted to show y'all uh how when using the techniques of flat mid high and swinging on an angle and whether you use detachable blades or you use the clipper with the lever on the side i wanted to show you guys what it looked like in a shop setting getting these haircuts done in a realistic atmosphere um i normally don't do a razor blade uh, lineup on every customer. Um, I don't always shave the neck on every customer. Everybody don't normally want that. But I wanted to show you guys, me doing it on each customer, how much time it would have naturally taken if I do that. So a haircut could normally be 13, 14 minutes, but when you get into the razor lineup and the shaving cream and everything, it could go to 17 minutes, 18 minutes, or a haircut that I could probably cut some time to 12 minutes or 13 minutes, when I use the razor blade, it can go to 15 minutes or 16 minutes. But realistically, I wasn't rushing. The customer didn't feel rushed. I was able to continue to talk. I stayed in the conversation with the shop. The vibe was good. But overall, I made good money. $100. Each haircut technically would have been $25 and normally a customer would tip $5. The minimum, sometimes higher, but it don't matter. But the point is, that was $100. And with the tip, it come out to be $120. And it was within an hour. Maybe it went over a little bit, but that little bit was maybe customers getting in and out of the chair, me cleaning the customer up, talking a little bit, lollygagging and playing. But overall, it can be done. And I just wanted to show you guys that. And if you have any questions about the Grandmaster Blade, you can message me. You also can send your blades in. And we'll custom cut your blades if you want the Grandmaster blade. And if you also want to know more about how I get to do these techniques, just look at our classes online for free. Take care.